I've got my fully charged capacitor. I'm gonna go ahead and put my neutral sphere in here. And there you go. Look at that in the middle. everybody today we're going to talk about conductors how they behave in fields how charges can move across them and we're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into two of the demonstrations that i've done in short format in shorts if you want to check those out which is this ping pong ball with this van de graaff and also this ping pong ball with a capacitor when i did these demonstrations in my shorts the biggest question that people had was how is a neutral object that has no charge no net charge uh, being attracted. So what we'll see here, I'm gonna turn this on. That gets attracted, and then you'll notice now it's repellent. I'm gonna discharge my system. So why was this thing initially, let's see if it has any charge left, nope. Why was this thing initially attracted if it's neutral? And then we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into how that works. What I have here is a neutral object. We can tell it is neutral because it has an equal amount of negative charges, 6, and positive charges, also 6. Now, when I place an object that is charged negatively, like the Van de Graaff, near this object, something interesting happens. Because it's a conductor, it's made out of metal, the charges can move across the surface. Now, as it turns out, opposite charges repel and like charges attract. So the positive charges on my neutral object move towards the negative object, and the negative charges move away. The object itself is still neutral, meaning it has an equal amount of negative and positives. But they are arranged now non-symmetrically. This means my neutral object is attracted to my negative object, because as it turns out, the electric force drops off as 1 over r squared which just means that the attraction force that's closest is the most powerful. Once the two objects touch, they instantly transfer charges. So my once neutral object is no longer neutral. You can see now it has a net negative charge and the two objects repel. You can imagine that if I discharge this object and bring it back to neutral, the entire process would start over again. The Van de Graaff is plugged into the wall and constantly adding negative charges to its surface, which is why we see the motion repeat over and over again. Okay, so now we can see that this thing has positive and negatives all across its surface, and when I turn on this device, all of the negatives go to the left side, all the positives go to the right side, which attracts it initially. But once it touches, it then gains a net charge, and so now it's being repelled. You can see it's repelling all around, if I discharge it, then it goes back again. And I can continue to do that quite violently and sort of funnily looking, where it's just discharging and recharging back and forth. So when a conductor is in an electric field, it can move where those charges are depending on the direction of the field. So what I have here is a parallel plate capacitor. And a capacitor is anything that has some type of positive charge on one side and negative on the other with something in between keeping them from flowing. In this case, it's air called a dielectric. It could be plastic, it could be oil, it could be lots of different things. This is a Wimhurst machine, which is something we'll talk about in more detail later. It's pretty cool in its own right. But what it can do is generate potentials or voltages. So I can actually drive negative charges from one plate to the other. And what that does is it leaves one plate as net negative and the other one as net positive. And so you have that difference in potential. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge that up. I have my neutral sphere here that we already explained how a neutral object can be attracted to things. I'm gonna place this between the plates. And we're getting that oscillation. Because what's happening is it's being attracted to one plate and gaining a charge, and then immediately being attracted to the other plate and gaining that charge, and it's going back and forth. And this is actually discharging the capacitor over time. Let's take a little bit of a closer, closer look at that. All right, so now we're here, we're a little bit closer. I've got my fully charged capacitor. I'm gonna go ahead and put my neutral sphere in here. And there you go. Look at that in the middle. Very interesting. Now, the other thing that we can show with this, let me recharge my capacitor really quick, is that the field lines in the capacitor, 
they're, par they're parallel, which is why this is bouncing back and forth. But if I put this near the edges, watch what happens. I'm not moving that with my hand. It's following the electric field lines at the edge of the capacitor. And I'll do this in front of the camera as well. Oh, maybe it doesn't want to do it in front of the camera. There it goes. Do you see how that's going? Now, I'm going to draw a little diagram here in a second so you can see why it's following this curved path back and forth on either side of the capacitor. Of course, once it gets inside, it goes back to the classic back and forth. 